As we work to complete our animation project, we can shortcut to it under assignments, go right to assignment three and where we post. If you ever want to remind yourself of like basic principles in animation, especially if you don't have Photoshop, you can open up this digital honors mentorship presentation. You can save this link and bookmark it even after this semester, you know, you'll be able to access it. These resources are available to you, even though the canvas will not be. And it will just tell you how to use some free software to make it work. And actually, there's a little edit I need to make because I've updated this. But I'll do that later. All right. Like the best possible sites that can, can give you the tools you need, even if you don't have Photoshop and the only the only difference between using PhotoP to do this and using Photoshop to do this is PhotoP doesn't have the same timeline tools that automatically allow you to output GIFs so what you have to do in PhotoP is you do it the exact same way but then you have to take all of your finished stage frames your layers and you have to save them individually as as JPEG files in a folder and then load them into another program in order to run the GIFs, which is a good knowledge set to have anyway. So this is where I left off. I had just finished an animation test. I had shown you how to save it as a GIF. I'll remind you of that. So once on your stage, you're playing your animation through and you like how it looks. This is a great way to kind of understand it. We did a little bit of animating on the stage, like repeating certain frames back and forth. So if you look at my layers here, you'll see the eyeball change a little as it goes from there to there to there to there. Mm -hmm. So since I did some animating on the stage, I don't want to wipe these frames quite yet until I've saved it. So I'm just going to show you once you have your your timeline frames, you can actually customize the individual use of them, right? You can have multiple frames on at once. So I can show you that here, like if I wanted to transition between this one and this one. Actually, I think I want to leave that because it's really fast kind of inhaling but now from here to here to here that's the exact same frame because I copied them all and then I reversed them and pasted them so I ended up with one frame in addition so I can delete that one and now I'm just toggling between these first two for a little while and maybe I want to slow that down slightly I can always set the timing individually. And you can go up to two decimal points. So I can say 0.35 instead of just 0.3. And just slow it down. Like his heart rate is slowing down. Yes, Alex. So for the frame delay, does it have to be 0 0.3? So 0 0.3 is my default. I think that runs pretty well as a test. But no, yours might be 0.1. You might try 0.15. And you can customize it for each frame. So that's just for my animation tests. Now when I'm ready to actually like fine tune it, this is called animating on the timeline. So I'm going to keep slowing it down. Maybe I go to 0.4. It's funny that 0.3 isn't one of the defaults. Like 0.2 is kind of the quickest default. And then 0.5 is, is two frames per second. That's just too slow for most things. But you might find that point two works really well for your animation. Just depends how your frames worked. Okay, so here is a good transition. And I can always play it from here. So now it slows down a little. You see that? And maybe I want to extend that. So, because usually when you're about to uh, get sick... <laughs> You're not breathing really heavily before you get sick, right? You're like, uh, oh no. So maybe I want to replicate that without having to create any new frames, just animating on the stage, right? 
So slowing these down, I have this repetition. So how can I copy these two frames? I can hold down Command or Shift, select both of them, go to my, my Timeline Window Options, just like where we made frames from layers. This is where I can also do things like copy the frames, just those two, and then I can do things like paste the frames. I can't use Command C, Command V, because that would affect the actual pixels in the layer. I have to do it on the timeline, which is just programming these eyeballs. And then I want to paste those frames after that selection, right? So it goes from here to here, from here to here, and then notice it saved this timing, so I can even extend it a little bit more, like 0 0.4, 0 0.45, and you can definitely try more things out. And then it goes to this, and that seems a little abrupt. So now what I'm going to do is copy this frame, and a quick way to just copy one instead of going to copy frame then paste is this little plus button next to the trash in the timeline window that will give you a copy of that exact frame with the exact same timing and then I can just move it. It's like splicing film. And now on this one I want to start speeding it up a little bit. Maybe I'll make a copy of... well let's take it down to three because he's about to heave. And I want him to start looking like he's a little sick. So the way I can do that is I can actually play with the opacity. And so I'm on frame 27 here, and I'm going to program eyeballs to be on. So now it's more than just one layer that's being shown. It's two layers. And then I can play with the opacity on there. But it looks like it would be better. Well, no, it will work. So he's starting to feel a little ill. So I'll just do it at 87%. He looks a little weird. And then he sharpens up. And that goes to 0.3 and then 0.3. And now I want to speed these ones up. So I'm going to try 0.25 because it's been building up in his mouth for a while. This is getting very, very graphic for the morning. And then it will go to three. And then, then this one, this is another transition one. You see how I have two open? And I'm going to go to, let's see, very quick, 0.15. So it's going to move through this one. This is called the transition. And all of these, where I kind of have it spew out of his mouth almost like gas, I'm going to make these 0.15 as well. And we can test it. Go back to here, play. That was weird. Let me see. So the slowing down definitely worked. I think I want to slow it down even more. And I'm going to take let's see this one. Let's make it 0.5 and make this one 0.45 and then all of a sudden so he sucks it all in
0 0.4, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0.45. OK, I think I'm going to copy all of those. So a full cycle. Copy frames, paste frames. Where do I want to paste them? I want to paste them after the selection. So I'm just going to cycle through this twice. But on that last one, I'm going to turn off the multiple layers. So, so I can build up to it a little bit more. Okay, let's try this. Slows down. Boom. Okay, so that's where the weird thing is happening. And you can see it frame by frame. So he's spewing it up, spewing it up, spewing it up. But that looks weird for some reason. So I might just get rid of this frame. Because it makes it look like it's reversing direction. Oh, I got rid of the wrong one. I don't want to add a frame. I want to drag it to the trash. The layer is still there if I ever, ever want to turn it back on. It's just going to, the eyeball is just going to skip that for the time being. So it slows down. Still is so weird. Yeah, maybe I actually got rid of the wrong one. Maybe I want this one to be this one instead. And you can just swap them too with the eyeball. So now it goes from this to this. Yeah, that works better. Okay. And sometimes you need to see things moving in order to understand it. Okay, now this is where I decide how much time I have to work on it. I have him just go backwards. Ideally, I would have him turn the other way and exit, right? But that would require new frames. So I'm going to show you one way I can do that without losing all of this work. And this will go to your question, Kat, like how we use the timeline. So I'm happy with it. That looks good for now. I'm going to say file, save it as my stage file. And then I'm going to go file, export, save for web legacy. This is from your stage. You can preview it. These are all the settings I used before. They seem to work fine. I'm going to say save. And I'm going to put it to the desktop. And it's now going to stage to save as a GIF file, a GIF. You do not type that in. You let the computer fill that in. So this will not overwrite your PSD file. It's something new. And then you can test it with Safari or with any web browser and just make sure that there's not something majorly wrong with it. Slows down, then pukes it up, and then leaves. And then I might think, you know what? I want to change one thing. This is why we run tests. These frames in the beginning, these three, they're good ones to copy and paste, but I'm going to paste them at the end just to extend that space between when the guy goes away and when he comes back. And then I'm going to reverse the order here. You can just say reverse. And I can even swap them around a little bit because they're just different atmosphere frames. Duplicate of that one, stick it in here. 